جاهز عبد الرحمن؟ جاهز؟ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد عبد الرحمن هناك غرفة دوانية بأن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار شاي أخضر؟ هاك هاك Hayakum Allah, brothers and sisters. Uh, alhamdulillah, today I arrived from the UK. I had uh, some lectures there from Thursday until uh, Monday. This was the third trip for me to UK. Alhamdulillah, yani we did the Usul Tharatha, the three fundamental principles by Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, about seven to eight hours. Alhamdulillah. يعني إذا مسجد دير مسجد الفرقان and Leicester most of them maybe 150 of the people 150 percent Somalian brothers and sisters okay يعني more than 100 percent how I don't know okay سبحان الله يعني you feel you are in Somalia there not in UK طيب ما شاء الله يعني سبحان الله whenever you go there if you visit there, okay, you, you realize the, the ni'mah that we have here. Yani the masajid, the time of the adhan, you hear the adhan. Tayyib, yani halal food, yani you don't ask here, halal, not halal. There is khamr, no khamr. Tayyib, yani this is very important for us to realize and to think about the favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to us here. You enter any masjid, big masjid, mashallah, clean masjid. You, you can use the water, the toilet. There they have, wallahi, I wonder yani, that when you enter the, the, the toilet, no water. Alaykum <laughs> salam. How, how they are cleaning themselves? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yani, I went to the toilet in the airport, the cleaner. I think non-Muslim. Yani he looks that Indian. But I think he was not Muslim. So uh, immediately when he saw me, he said, uh, do you need bottle? <laughs> he knows that the Muslim people. They, they, they. So it was hidden. Okay, I will not tell you the place because if you go to the Heathrow airport, you'll take it. Alas. <laughs> it is hidden yani, in the, behind the mirror. If you open the mirror, you can't take the bottle. Empty bottle with you in the toilet. Yani, subhanallah, this is clear that they are very, uh, yani, they, they don't have the rules in Islam about cleanliness. We have basics. I mean, to clean ourselves. This is najis. This is tahir. Okay, from childhood, alhamdulillah. Our children, they know. This is najis. This is tahir. I have to clean myself. You have to wash your hand. But they don't have this concept. Jahiliya, this is Jahiliya, they think that they are advanced countries. Okay, they are advanced country, but they have shirk. They don't know the rules of cleanliness. They don't have the manners to respect the old, to have mercy on the children. Okay, they don't have like these manners. Subhanallah. Yani, uh, one of the points they mention in the, in the area, the, the, the masjid, their masjid Furqan, uh, Mr. Subhanallah, they said before, uh, I don't know, maybe 30 years or something, it was a very bad area. Very bad area. Yeah, Subhanallah, you see the haram in the street. But Alhamdulillah, when the Muslim, when the Muslims came, now it's okay. Yani, uh, what is the problem? The problem we say, wherever you see the Muslims, it is corrupted there. But this is not always correct. Alhamdulillah, when the Muslims come, yani many, many times we hear that the non-Muslims like when the pe person 
becomes Muslim. Why? Because before Islam, killing, uh, stealing, and doing a lot of things. But after embracing Islam, he's calm. He's in the masjid, he's memorizing the Quran. They will not mention this fact. They mention always Muslims are terrorists. Subhanallah. And what they are doing? Okay. They are killing. In the first world war, the second, Harb al Alamil, or Harb al Alamil Thaniya. Who are killing the people? Muslims? Muslim. I mean, in 1945 and 1920, you know, the, the First World War and the Second. Who, who were killing the, the people? Muslims? How many millions were killed? SubhanAllah, not Muslims. Not by Muslims. Muslims were victims. Always we are victims. SubhanAllah. So, uh, they need Islam. They need Islam. Okay, and uh, also what is important, uh, yes, the, some Muslims have freedom there. They don't get their, the, this freedom in their countries. But also, on the other hand, they are suffering because they cannot control their children. This is a, one of the biggest problems. They cannot control their, their children. Your child in the school, and you cannot control your child. Okay, and uh, yani, I think from last year, or this is coming. They are teaching their children the sex in the school. Okay, but the problem, how, how, what is the meaning of sex? How to teach the sex? By their own way? Or, yani, they, they cannot come to the schools of the Muslims and tell them, close your school. You are Muslims, you should close your They cannot do this. Or they don't want to do this. Why to show that we support Muslims? But they, do, they are doing it in a different way. Yani, uh, in the masjid, there is a school. The masjid, uh, four floors. One floor, musalla, the prayer room for the men, and one of them for the women, and the third for the, uh, the school. It is for girls. And the basement, until now, not prepared for anything. They, inshallah, they will do it. At the beginning, they, the plan is to make it a school for Muslims, separate, boys, girls. The government said, no. You have to mix them. They said, okay, khalas. In the same class, in the same room, but boys one side, the girls other side. No, you have to mix them. Okay, why, why you are doing this? Subhanallah. No, you have to teach them, alaykum the concept to, to live together. So they, they know that the Muslims will close the school or because the Muslim will not accept that. So at the end, they decide, khalas, this is only for the girls. What to do? What to do? Subhanallah. So they are khabith. They are khabith. Evil people. These non-Muslims people. Okay, they talk, we want the peace. Okay, we, we want to live together. You are welcome, you are Muslim, you are Hindu, you are... Okay, but this is not the fact. Subhanallah. Allah told us, وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ They will not be pleased with you until you follow them. It's not from me, not from Sheikh Bin Al-Thaymin, not Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah. This is from Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Be sure that they, are, they will not be pleased with you. I mean, generally, as a general rule. Okay? So, yes, they get chance. Many Muslims got chance to live with, uh, with them in their countries, and they give you the passport. Hayakallah, you are welcome. We give you good salary. But you lose your children. This is one of the biggest challenges with the Muslim community there. With time, khalas. Here, many times I say, here in Kuwait, it is a Muslim country. You have the masjid. You have the halqa. Alhamdulillah, Muslim, uh, most of the people here Muslim, are Muslims. Okay? And difficult to control your son or your daughter. What about there? Okay? In the masjid, okay. Alhamdulillah. But outside in the street, you cannot say anything. Even at home, you cannot shout your ch child. If you shout your child, خلاص. you cannot do anything for your wife. طيب, يعني, uh, if you have money, خلاص, after, after divorce, how much? 
50 percent subhanallah okay this is my money my wealth you lose 50 percent where is the justice when al adil billah they don't have any anything like this okay so alhamdulillah uh, the muslims there some of them of course not all of them some of them are working hard there yeah mashallah in the, in the masjid uh, i think more than 100 people attended my class the, the first day more than the second i think the first day maybe 130 or 140 but the second day less 100 because it is not easy any tough yani from uh, Isha until uh, sorry from Asr and Asr it is 2 p.m. until Isha it is uh, 7 7 p.m. about 5 hours and the second day from Duhr from Duhr to Isha and it is not easy and to stay in one place in the masjid sitting on the ground not tables not chairs okay so this is something great that you are in a non-muslim country and people attend the three fundamentals okay a course eight hours this is alhamdulillah great people there are learning islam they are learning islam may allah protect the muslims everywhere let's continue our chapter of al-libas Alibas Adab, Alibas. We are uh, studying this this book for those who I show this book, to. the Book of Manner, the Book of Manners. We finish point number three, sah. We finish point number three. Now point number four. We finish point number five. Point number four. It is forbidden to drag one's garment on the ground with a feeling of khuyala. Khuyala, it is uh, arrogance. Kibr. Okay, yani it is close to this one. He put uh, heightness and self conceit. It means arrogance, kibr. It means kibr. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi mentioned hadith: "لا ينظر الله يوم القيامة إلى من جر إزاره بطرا." The hadith in the next page, page three five six, on the day of resurrection, Allah doesn't look at a person who, from his pride and transgression, dragged his lower garment on the ground. And he mentioned a hadith بينما رجل يمشي في حلة تعجبه نفسه مرجن جمته إذ خسف الله به فهو يتجلجل إلى يوم القيامة As a man was walking in a, a hula If you remember we spoke about hula when we explained الشماء المحمدية Hula means two parts or two pieces of cloth, cloth. A two piece garment Admiring his own self with his jumma, hair that reached one's shoulder. If you remember, we mentioned the Prophet sometimes his hair to, to his shoulder, and sometimes his hair lower to his ear. Combed, Allah made the air to swallow him, and he will continue to sink in it until the day of resurrection okay the hadith he main, mainly talks about yani something in the heart something wrong in the heart al kibr the pride the arrogance al khuyala al batar batar also means ar- arrogance it, there is no problem if you wear something nice and uh, yani clean and maybe a little bit expensive no problem if it is in from halal but the problem if this joined with kibr. Okay, I drive a car, okay, but with a feeling of kibr and showing people th- this arrogance. I have new dress and watch. Why? Out of arrogance, out of kibr. This is the problem, not the problem with the, the dress itself sometimes. 
طيب but with what you have inside your heart and what how, how you are showing this so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished him by making the, the earth to swallow him and some scholars said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa means in this hadith the one who was swallowed Qarun Qarun Allah mentioned the Quran surah Al-Qasas فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ Allah told us the story of Qarun one of the people of Musa relatives of Musa عليه الصلاة والسلام إِنَّ قَارُونَ كَانَ مِنْ قَوْمِ مُوسَى فَبَغَى عَلَيْهِمْ He was one of the people of Musa his, yeah, some scholars said his cousin طيب, so at the end of the story فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ we made the earth to swallow him طيب, so some scholars said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم meant in this hadith قارون طيب also there is hadith why it is haram why it is haram because this is one of the attributes of Allah الكبر والخيالاء the Prophet ﷺ said, العز إزاره والكبراء رداءه فمن ينازعني عذبته. طيب. The Prophet ﷺ said, العز the glory and and might is his izar lower garment, and الكبراء grandeur and pride is his رداء robe. رداء means the upper part. And Allah, Allah said, so as for the who challenges me in them, I will punish him. These are my attributes. And also my name. I, I mean, the, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Mutakabbir. One of the names of Allah, Al-Mutakabbir. So don't use the name of Allah and the, or don't use his, this attribute. So if you... Try to use this attribute of Allah, Al-Kibir wal khuyala Allah will punish you. And Allah will not care about you. Another narration, Qadaftuhu fi nar Qadaftuhu means punished him. Okay? Or Qadaftuhu, I will throw him in the hellfire. So he mentioned, in, uh, as a note after that, and Nawawi said, challenges me refers to a person who tries to adopt those qualities for himself, thus setting himself up as a, a partner. So the hadith contains a severe warning against as well as a clear prohibition of pride and heightenedness. This is one of the major sins, one of the major sins. Then he said to wear beautiful clothing, whether it is expensive or not, doesn't mean that one has that pride which is warned against in the preceding narrations okay but also we are about expensive we have to be careful not to reach to the level of israf okay maybe يعني, i will something expensive but be careful don't reach the level of israf what's mean israf wasting exceeding yes extra exceeding the limit the normal limit. طيب يعني يعني if you remember I mentioned the غترة. Okay, maybe the normal غترة if you go to the جمعية you'll find for one غترة maybe two kd. This is very cheap. Or one and a half. Very cheap. The normal seven kd. Five kd. Okay, maybe I buy one for the Eid, for the Jum'a. Jum'a or Dunhill or something like this. Yani famous brand. How much? Maybe 15 kd, 20 kd. Okay, if, if you can afford this. It is not haram. If you are wearing this for the Jum'ah, for the Friday, you keep only one good quality. And of course, it is expensive because it is good quality. You keep it for Jum'ah. And maybe it will stay with you. Maybe one year, two years, three years. No problem. Okay, some of them, yani you are, because you are using it once a week. So it stays maybe for five, six years, no problem. So no problem if you pay 20 KD. Halas, you keep it for the, if there is a wedding party, if there is Eid, there is Jum'ah, you keep it. Is it haram? No, it is not haram. 
Yes, it is expensive, relatively ex expensive, because the normal range is 5 KD from 5 to 10, but this is 20. Expensive, but I'm not using it uh, out of arrogance. Only to respect this, the day of Jum'ah, it is Sunnah to wear something special. But uh, there is a problem if you, if you wear it and only to show people. Huh? Yalla. You want to show them the name of your ghutra. You should read. It is a cartier or whatever. Or also it is haram, for example, if you buy something, 200 KD. Habib, this is yeah, too much. We don't consider this as a normal or even not a good quality. Yeah, it is a piece of cloth. Why you pay 200? Habib, 10 KD enough. 20 KD enough. But 200, 300? No, this is haram, israf. This is israf. Tayyib. And what is the proof for that? It is allowed to wear something uh, nice. The hadith, when the Prophet وسلم, said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. He will not enter paradise who has in his heart an atom's weight of pride. And as I repeated this again and again, the word atom, sorry, the word dharra mainly means the small ant, the small ant. So immediately a man said to the Prophet ﷺ, verily, a man loves for his garment to be nice and for his shoes to be nice. So يعني, I like to, to go outside with nice look. The Prophet ﷺ, no problem, it's okay. He said, in Allah jameel yuhibu al-jamal. In Allah jameel yuhibu al-jamal. Verily Allah is jameel. Beautiful. And he loves beauty. Okay. What is the meaning of the hadith? Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-kibru bataru al-haq wa ghamtu al-nas. Al-kibru, what, yani the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling him, what do I mean by al-kibr, by the arrogance, the pride, bataru al-haq, to reject the haq. وَقَبْتُ النَّاسِ To put down the people and to this uh, or to humiliate people and look down up, uh, upon them. Not to respect the people. This is the meaning of kibr. This is the meaning of kibr. You give me an advice and I don't listen to you. Why? Because you have diploma and I have master's degree. I don't listen to your advice. Why? Because I am Kuwaiti and you are non-Kuwaiti. I am not listening to your advice. Why? Because I am rich and you are poor. This is kibr. This is haram. This is a major sin. Yani, the hadith is very dangerous. Mithqal darra. Even the, way, the weight of an small, a small ant. He will not enter the paradise. Of course, he is not kafir, but this is a major sin. This is a major sin. Tayyib. Uh, Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, gave a comment. This is very important. He said, it is inferred from the context of the hadith that dragging one's garment is specifically mentioned because that most often indicated a person's pride. Yet, uh, what is this word? Swaggering? Swaggering and heightenedness are also cul uh, culpable offenses, even if a person tucks up his lower garment. طيب يعني this is very important comment from Al Hafiz Ibn Hajar rahimahullah taala. The point is not only if your garment is uh, dragging on the ground, even if it is a little bit lower. Okay, still it is haram. Why? Because it is a company with the kibir and the proud, a pride. Okay? So this is also this is also haram. This is also haram. Next point, libas shuhra. This is a very important point also. The prohibition of wearing clothing to gain fame or to draw to oneself the attention of others. 
لباس الشهرة Some people mainly women wear expensive or uh, ostentatious uh, clothing so that others will look at them and so that they will gain a sort of fame or reputation in society. At the same time, they look down on others and wear their showy clothing with a great sense of pride. Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man labisa thawba shuhra fi dunya albasa Allah thawba madala fi yawm al-qiyamah. Whoever wears a garment of shuhra, one that is uh, ostentatious or showy, and that is worn to attract the attention of others, in this world, then Allah will attire him with a garment of humiliation on that day of resurrection. So this is uh, the point here. Why you are wearing this? To attract people. Pay attention to me. I want to be famous. Yeah, for example, here in Kuwait, I mean the Kuwaiti style. Dishdasha. It's called Dishdasha. Okay, what is the color of Dishdasha in the summer? White. White. Okay, little bit yellow, light blue, green, light green. This is normal. Can imagine in the summer, in July, the temperature 50, 51, 49, okay, and you wear something yani, dark purple. And the ghutra, yeah, green. Why are you are doing this? Okay. People, yani, subhanAllah, now it is strange. It is strange. People, some people do anything. Why? To be famous. And if you like, you can't try tomorrow. No, don't try. Because this is haram. Wallah, yani, subhanAllah, this is fitna. This is a trial. How to be, to be famous. Okay, do something strange. Do something stupid. People like this. Okay, they wish something strange. They do. They say uh, strange words. They do strange movements, actions to be famous. They don't care. They don't care about Islam. They don't care about the traditions. In, yeah, for example, in the country. Subhanallah. So it is haram. And also, he mentioned very, very important point here. He said, uh, Ibn Al-Athir, one of the scholars after the Hadith. In its original meaning, shuhra simply means to show something. To show something. Uh, and also he mentioned a point here in, the, in page 359, related issue. A garment of shuhra, of fame, is not limited to expensive clothing. This is very important. Again, a garment of shuhra, a garment of fame, is not limited to expensive clothing, even cheap or inferior clothing can be considered to be clothing of shuhra. How? Okay. Maybe I go to my, my, uh, my house and to find something very old. And I wear it. It is very short. Okay, and there are some يعني, tears. It is or torn in this place, that place. The color different because it is old. It should be, for example, brown, but in this place, white, white, white. Okay, so it is very cheap. And people will not look, يعني, sorry, people will not buy it. But if you wear it, you will be famous. Look, that sheikh, he is Zahid. To show that I am Zahid. What means Zahid? That means I am, I am a man of the Akhirah. I don't care about the dunya. Also, this is haram. Also, this is haram. To do something. Okay. To be famous. This is haram. Buy something expensive or something cheap. Do like people. Do like people. Uh, it's, your aim should not be to, to be unique and every, everyone wants to make a photo, a selfie with me. 
Why? You, sh you should be normal like people. I mean, in your appearance. Okay, okay you should be unique in your knowledge, in your ibadah at home. I mean, your ibadah, your worship of Allah, Qiyamul Layl. Are you doing Qiyam Layl at home? We don't know how many rak, how many hours you are praying. This should not be shown for people. Okay? This should not be shown for people. Okay, خلاص. This is at home between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you dress, dress something normal. Something normal. Not to attract, not to attract people. Okay, so this is very, very important. And also, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, in the middle of this paragraph, in page 359, Ibn Taymiyyah said, any attire that is worn for shuhra is this light. Clothing that is worn for shuhra is any clothing that is not commonly worn by people. And that is worn to show the wearer's superiority over others or the wearer's inferiority. So both sides, to be superior or inferior, haram. And it will be included in the hadith. So this is the, the, the point here. And at the end, Shaykh al-Islam said, وخير, وخير اللباء, وخير At the end, okay, at the end of page 359, and the best of matters are the middle ones. Be middle, alhamdulillah. Next point, تحريم الذهب والحرير على الرجال إلا من عذر. No, about, about the wedding party, this will not be applied for the wedding party. Because this is common. I mean, this is not uh, something strange. This is common for any wedding party. The groom and the bride, they, they wear something special. Yeah, for example, in Kuwait, uh, we say Mi'ris, uh, the bride. Okay? Uh, sorry, the groom. صح? Groom, the male, the groom. Uh, he puts the... Uh, I think he wants the money, the, uh, Jalal. Uh, Bisht. What's the name of the Bisht? Bisht, huh? In Arabic, it is Aba'a. In Arabic, it is called Aba'a. I mean, the groom wears the Aba'a. It is black, for example, or brown or gray. Only him. Or, or uh, the groom and his father and his father-in-law. Okay, what about the other people? None of them. Okay, can we say this is libas shura, this is haram? No, this is not haram because this is common. Okay, when you are going to do it, you eat it. Okay? Inshallah. Oh, Inshallah. Huh? They don't know who is this. Okay? But later the ladies will check by navigation. The, the, the sound came from this corner. Okay? 45, <laughs> they, can ca they can catch you by navigation. طيب. So this is okay. This is okay. طيب. Why are you afraid? Afraid? Yes. <laughs> Last day. Last <laughs> <laughs> day. Number six. The prohibition of men wearing gold and silk, except for those who have a valid excuse. Uh, first of all, we like to, uh, to say, we have to say, when the scholars talk about the silk, they mean the natural silk, al-harir al-tabi'i. They don't mean the artificial, because now it is common when you go to the market, okay, the textile, they tell you this, this silk, silk, okay, maybe one meter, one dinar or two dinars, okay, but this is artificial, okay. We are, to we are talking about the natural, from the... Do that al the woman. Okay? The scholars here talk about the natural, not the artificial. Tamam? Okay? So here we are talking about the natural silk. The natural silk. Al Harir al Tabi'i. Al Harir al Tabi'i. And also the dahab, the gold, we are talking about the gold, the, the yellow. The yellow uh, gold. 
Okay? Because sometimes they say, this is gold and it is not gold. It is uh, platinum. Okay? Or they say uh, the oil, the black gold, the black gold, the oil, the, uh, the petrol. Okay, petrol, okay? When the, we talk here about the gold, we mean the, the, the natural gold. Okay, the, yani the gold, the yellow gold, and the natural silk. We don't talk about the platinum and, or other, other metals. So it is haram for the males. Okay, for the males. Okay, what is the difference if we say males and men? What is the difference between males and men? Because if we say men or man, it means the adults. So the boys not included, but if we say males, also the boys are included. Because this is one of the questions here. Is it allowed to use the gold or silk for the boys? Because in some places they use it. They, 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 they put some gold on, for the boys. Are you using this in Bangladesh? Jalal? You don't remember? Abu Fatma? In India, they use the gold for the boys. Muslims. Tamam? Muslims. Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka. They are using or not? No, I mean Muslims. In Kuwait, yes. In Kuwait, yes. For the kids. Uh, this is another issue. This is another issue. Inshallah, we'll come inshallah, to this issue. But I mean for the boys, for the boys, I will, not, I will not say this is common, Allah A'lam, but it was there. It was there, here in Kuwait, Muslims. Okay, they put uh, maybe a bracelet, okay, maybe, or some ring. Yeah, they put gold for the boys. Okay, it was there in Kuwait, but alhamdulillah, now we don't see this. Okay, is it okay, is it okay or not? And the silk, the silk. Some scholars say this is okay. Why? Because uh, he's not adult. No sin for him. Okay? But other scholars like Sheikh Sam Tabi say no. Yes, the boy will not get the sins. But the father or the mother who put the gold or silk for them, they will be sinners. Okay? If you remember when you spoke about the salah, did you remember, I, I, didn't I mention this point? The salah. At the age of seven, you tell your son or daughter when they are seven years old, pray, 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 pray for three years. Then after three years, when they are at the age of 10, he likes to, okay. <laughs> you beat them if they don't pray. If they don't pray, they will not, they will not get sins. Okay, but the problem with the parents, if you don't tell your children to pray, you will be the sinners. You as fathers, you, you as mothers. Because the order from the Prophet ﷺ to the parents or to, or to the children? To the parents. Okay? Clear? So this is our duty. This is our duty as parents. To tell our children, yalla, go and pray. Yes, it is not wajib, but we have to teach them. And also the same thing. Not to buy for the boys, okay, the silk or the gold. They are young. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, the kur, the hadith, he mentioned the hadith in point six. Inna hadaini, the Prophet ﷺ uh, took some silk and placed, placed it in his right hand. And he took some gold and placed it in his left hand. Then he said, Verily, these two are haram. Verily, these two are forbidden upon the males. Okay? This is the point here. This is the point here. He said, males. The Prophet ﷺ said here, males. The kur. So that, that's why we say it is haram to use, use them for the boys. Why? Because boys 
considered as males. If the hadith, if the hadith is رجال ummati, maybe the issue will be different. Okay? Of my nation. Okay? So they are halal for the females, haram for the males. And also the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever wears gold in this world will not wear it in the hereafter. Okay? He means the <coughs> males. He, mean, he means the males, not, uh, not the females, because this is allowed for the females. This is allowed for the uh, females. About al khatam, about the ring, okay? Also, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam naha an khatam al dhahab. It is of course for the for the men. Naha an khatam al dhahab. It is forbidden for the man to use the gold, the golden ring, made of gold. This is haram for the men. Man, it was allowed. If you remember, we discussed this in Shama al Muhammadiyah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wear. A ring made of gold. Then it became haram. It became haram. Okay, so it was allowed. Then it became uh, not allowed. You were using the ring. So uh, sometimes in the wedding or before, صح? before the wedding party, before the aqd, khutbah. Khutbah means engagement. Engagement. Khutbah, they give the the, the man gives the woman, and the woman gives the man a ring. But usually silver, صح? Usually silver ring or gold? Not in where? Okay. Okay, maybe in, uh, in the Arab world, maybe. In, in the Arab world, okay. They give uh, uh, silver, okay? If it is gold, this is haram for the man. If it is gold, it is haram for the man. If it is silver, is it allowed or not? The silver ring, is it allowed for the man? It is allowed, but in this, in this, in this event, khutbah, the engagement, the marriage, خلاص. يعني some people, I'm using the ring. Why? Because this is a sign. خلاص. Find another one, not me. صح? They use it like, like this, صح? Sheikh Muhtamin spoke about this point in Kitab Tawheed. Sheikh Muhtamin, rahmallah, mentioned this point, the ring for the, uh, 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 it is called Dibla al Khutuba. Dibla al Khutuba. The ring for the engagement. Okay, it is not allowed. Okay, why? Because the Christians used to, he mentioned Rahimullah, they go to the church and they put, uh, they put the finger, the father, the mother, or uh, the father, the son, okay? And also they believe if I remove this ring, it means khalas. There is no love between us. Okay, so using the ring would a uh, uh, belief that's why it is haram that's why it, this is hala, haram some people say no it's okay i don't think uh, i'm not thinking and i don't know anything about them the kuffar why they are using it okay we should not imitate them we should not imitate the kuffar خلاص الخطبه okay you go to the father of the girl and you uh, you tell that i promise to marry your daughter this is khutbah خلاص they accept or they reject Okay, and uh, for the marriage, okay, if you'll go forward for it, you send al-mahar, the dowry. This is the marriage, okay, but to wear the ring, okay, and sometimes, a'udhu billah, before marriage, before the ijab qabul, okay, before they become husband, wife, he touched the, the, the lady, and she touched him. This is haram, because she's not your wife. He is not your husband. Okay, they sit together and yalla, give me the ring and I give you the ring and they go together and they chat together, they love together and they live uh, uh, not at the same place but خلاص, they meet every day. 
for one year. Okay? No, this is haram. This is haram. طيب. Why? No, I need to know him. And I, I need to know this, this girl. Subhanallah. One year? Okay. Some people, one year is not enough. Okay? Now, how many years with your wife? <laughs> طيب. Okay, maybe 10 years. And until now, you don't understand your wife. <laughs> and also the same thing. Okay? I'm not joking. There's one, uh, one of the specialist people. They said some sometimes, sometimes يعني, they don't understand each other within the five years. Maybe after, they need five years, maybe. Yeah. Hmm? They are like mysteries. They are like mysteries. Mystery. Okay, so they want to, to have the engagement for one year to know him and to know her. This is wrong. This is wrong. No? Engagement party. They have the celebration along with the communion. Okay, do, do, no problem. Yeah, and you, you mean they do small party? For khutbah only. Do, do, do this, but it, there should not be mixing. Okay, maybe I. Uh, uh, yani, uh, they do party, maybe small or big party for the, for the men alone, and the ladies alone. Okay. Along with the, it's not like that. Okay. They 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 prefer uh, the engagement. For example, if I'm going to marry a girl, and my family and their family, they get together on the day, and they fix long period. You know, like this. So, uh, yeah. This yeah. Okay. Okay. About, about the stuff, maybe some people they do the big party before the ijab qabul okay but at the time of ijab qabul they do another walima but very small walima no. also big <laughs> okay yani, yani, it, it depends yani, to, to, to decide this is israf or not this is wasting money or, or not yani, for example i am from a family and my wife from another family and i have a big tribe and also she has a big tribe Okay, they, I have a, a lot of relatives and also she has a, a lot of relatives. And we used to invite everyone. And I have enough money and she has en enough money. Okay, so we do two parties. One for my, yani I, I hear some people, uh, I think uh, someone told me in India or some places, they do one, one party for the man, the male's side, and another for the female. They do, sir. Okay, why? Because big families. Big family, yeah, and to do one, or, or sometimes there is no in, enough space. Okay, there is no enough space. I mean, yeah, uh, about, yeah, it depends also on the traditions. Okay, yeah, uh, I need to invite them. I need to invite my family. And also she wants to invite the, uh, the family of the, the, the wife. Okay, I cannot say no, I will do only small party for 50 people. Okay, but uh, yeah, in my family, 500, and your family, 500. You do a party only for 50? Okay, yeah, you'll do a problem. You create a problem in the, in, the, in, the, in the family, in the village. Okay, I mean, if you can, if you can, طيب, this is once a life, yeah, خلاص. Most of us, when marriage, during the Walima, there is a big party, almost 2,000 people attend. The next day, there is... 2,000? Yes. MashaAllah. Yeah. All the Muslims in India. Okay, this is not our topic. This is not our topic. So, uh, yani, we should be careful not to not to waste the money. Uh, and also, there is a problem. Sometimes I cannot. Yeah, for example, I have money only to invite fifty people. Okay, so sometimes I take loans, a lot of loans, to invite the five hundred people. Then this, it is a problem. Yani, try to be simple. Okay? Khalas, you can't invite 50 people, khalas. You tell your family, yani, sorry, yani, I cannot. I invite, for example, my, my father and his, uh, uh, yani, my, fa uh, my father's brothers, they're very close relatives. My, my, of course, my brothers and my nephews, they're very close, 50, 50, 60. Why? Because I cannot. Some people here in Kuwait, they do like this. So what is uh... They? The groom can't afford. It's his family, uh, 
His friends? Okay. His family likes to to uh, to contribute. It's okay. But I, I mean, يعني, we should we should يعني, you know you know your place more. Okay. Sometimes it is uh, يعني, wasting. Definitely, this is wasting. Okay. Only sometimes only to show. Because my neighbor did a, a, a wedding party and I like to make something bigger. Okay. Then. This is haram, if you remember, depends also what, what is inside your heart. What is your aim? My aim is to make something bigger. And also the third one will do bigger than me and you. They يعني, try to make it simple. And subhanAllah, يعني, save, save this money for th this family. I mean the new family. Maybe they, they need to buy a house. يعني, instead of feeding 2,000 people. Okay, give this money to, for them to buy a house. Or to find a job for them. Okay, يعني مسكين, يعني, you know, in your place. The lady is paying the, the mahar. Or the, she's paying many things. Okay? So this is not our topic. There is a point that, uh, yes, we mentioned the ring, the gold ring for the man. It's not allowed. طيب. What about the harir? What about the harir? The silk for the, uh, the males. The Prophet وسلم, gave the permission for Abdurrahman ibn Awf was Zubair ibn al-Awwam. He gave the permission for Abdurrahman ibn Awf was Zubair ibn al-Awwam. Because they have a skin problem. They, he, he, the Prophet وسلم, gave them the permission to use the silk. Why? Because they have a problem with the, the skin. Okay? If they use the cotton, if they use the wool, uh -huh, they, uh, it will be itchy. Okay? When they, if they use silk, it's okay. Is it allowed? Yes, it is allowed. So if I use, for example, cotton, if I use polyester, no, it is very difficult for me. It will be very hot. Or uh, يعني, I need to apply some medicine. But if I use silk, it's okay. خلاص, use silk. This is an exception. This is an exception. You can use silk. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned there, uh, 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 he mentioned the permission for the Abdul, Abdul, uh, Abdul Rahman Awf and Zubayn Awam. Some scholars also said it is allowed to use it in the in the war. In the war, it is allowed to use it in the war. Okay, but we don't have a hadith. We don't have a hadith that the Prophet وسلم, said it's okay in the war. I mean, we don't have authentic hadith. He mentioned it is allowed to use it in the war, but it, it is uh, we don't have a proof. We don't have a proof from the Sunnah. I mean, we don't have authentic hadith. Also, there is an exception. So the first exception is if you have a disease. The second exception, as it came in hadith Umar ibn Khattab, radiyallahu uh, ta'ala The Prophet sallallahu forbade using the harir, the silk, illa mawdi' sub'ayn, aw thalatha, aw arba'. Tayyib. The Prophet ﷺ forbid using the silk except for the size of two fingers or three fingers or four fingers. This is okay. Even if you are okay, this doesn't mean that if you are sick, if you have itchy skin. No, uh, it's okay. Yani for, yani for example, I like to put silk, uh, yani you, uh, for example, the size of, the size of this, uh, the, the pocket. Okay, this is okay. Maybe someone like to use uh, يعني only small size. يعني, you know, you put the, the place of the, the buttons. Okay, or the collar. What, what is the name of it? Collar? Collar. Okay. So it's okay. يعني something small size. Two fingers, three fingers, four fingers. This, uh, this is in the Hadith, in the Bukhari, and Muslim. This is the Hadith, in the Bukhari, and Muslim. طيب uh, What about the karafitta? What does it mean karafitta? The tie. Okay. Uh, the, the first thing, is it allowed or not? Because some scholars said this is not allowed. Some scholars said it is not allowed. Why? Because this is the way of the kuffar. 
This is something special, special for the kuffar. So we should not imitate them. And the other scholar said, يعني, now, nowadays, it is not a specific thing for them. It is not specific for the kuffar. The tie. يعني, maybe before, if you see a person, a man, wearing this tie, immediately you, see, you know he is not Muslim. But nowadays, you cannot differentiate. Muslim or not Muslim. I mean, it is not a sign that he is Muslim or not Muslim. So that's why some scholars said, we, know, we, we can use it. It is allowed to use it. Uh, some scholars said, it is allowed to use it. And, and also, I mean, those scholars who said, uh, it is haram, because before they, they were using it in a way to show that you are wearing a cross. Yeah, and they put the tie in this way, something long, then something in, in cross from the upper side. So it looks like salib, a cross. So that, but, but with time, they changed it. They made it, they made it straight. Okay? So some scholars said, we don't care about the history because people don't know the history. When the people put the, 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 the tie, do they know? Do you, they realize the, the history of the tie or they don't know anything? They don't know anything. So that's why they said it is it's okay. But no doubt, if you avoid, this is better. If, if you avoid this tie, it's better. Okay? And it is common that, uh, uh, يعني, uh, what I know, Iranian people don't use it. Iranian people, they don't use it. SubhanAllah. Even the meetings, okay? I mean, international meetings. You see them without the tie. Did you notice this or not? No, they don't use it, okay? Uh, the, second, the second part of this issue about the, the tie. Is it, a, it is common that it is made of silk. So is it allowed to use it or not if it is made of silk? Artificial or natural silk? Artificial, no problem. Okay, but if you are a VIP, will you use Natural silk, okay, or always it is artificial. Always. <laughs> okay, if it is uh, made of silk, I mean the natural silk, okay. No, it is bigger than four fingers. It is bigger than four fingers, and purely it is made of silk. Then uh, the scholar said this is haram. But for example, if it is mixed. Yeah, for example, it is made of wool or made of cotton and only 20% or 10% of silk, then it is okay. Okay, so if most of it of cotton, okay. And little bit silk, it's okay. okay? But generally speaking, we should try. It's better to try to avoid it. Try to avoid it. Okay. Number seven, it is sunnah for men to wear short clothing and for women to wear long clothing. Subhanallah. He said uh, in the middle of this uh, page 362, these days especially it is sad to see that many people are acting contrary to the sunnah in this regard. Men wear long pants that drag on the ground, nay, that sweep the ground clean, and women wear short pants or sh skirts, thus revealing their ankles and legs. Yeah, subhanAllah. Yani, nowadays, yes, really, we see the opposite. Not yani, uh, all of people, but many times. You see the men, the trousers, very long. And for the, uh, our sisters, the women, subhanAllah, it is short. Yeah, now, Ajib, even subhanAllah, those who cover the head, I will, not, I will not say using the hijab, those who cover the head, they wear something short. Okay? Yeah, they should be careful. Wallah, they should think about the akhirah. They should think about the day of judgment. 